2000 Elo is often considered to be a bit of a threshold between like an intermediate chess player and then when a chess player becomes more of an expert. I crossed 2000 Delo kind of a while ago, but I've been stuck between 2000 and 2100 for some time. So in today's video, we're going to be seeing if I can push my Blitz Elo up anywhere closer towards 2100, which would be great. Uh, I'll probably play two games in this video, unless one just ends really quickly, and then analyse both of them. It's going to be a bit shorter than normal, but I hope you guys enjoy the slightly different style format. Alright, let's get into it. We're going to start with C4 in today's game against Chess White. Rom, is that Cuba? Yeah, Cuba. Okay, we're going to play the English, and I do have a couple of videos that I made kind of recently which featured the English, which went very well. I'm assuming my opponent's preparing d5. I'm not going to be able to explain quite as well my um, thought process as I do in my rapid games because obviously this is blitz and my opponent is very high rated. So this is going to be difficult. He's kind of sitting back though. This is some nice pressure on b7. I'm not sure how his bishop's going to develop. Let's take the center with d4. Probably going to play b3, bishop b2. I wanted to delay b4 um, until an opportune moment. Okay, that's not a concern. I'm just going to leave the tension in the position. Don't break the tension for no reason. That is not good chess. I want to keep this pawn here. And if he takes, I'm going to take like this. This is really nice. I'm going to develop my bishop to b2. I don't see what this does. Maybe he's preparing a5, a4. I'm not sure. Maybe he's preparing d5. But if he goes d5, eh, I think it's fine. Oh, this is interesting. If he goes d5, I might push c5. Keep the center locked. Or I could put the knight on like f4. He's threatening this pawn though, so maybe queen d3. Yeah, I'm going to go queen d3 for now. Again, leave the tension. If takes, then takes. And then b7 will remain weak. I don't really want to take him, because then he can take like this and get his bishop out. Probably put a rook on e1, maybe a rook on d1 or c1, maybe put this rook on d1. a3 might be a decent move to play at some point, which would also make a5, a4 less effective, because if I had a3, I can push b4 in some scenarios, or do something like um, c5 followed by b4, so that you can't take on c4. Okay, he takes. Um, that's slightly annoying, to be honest. Knight b5, queen c4, queen c4, knight c4, no, that's no good. Um, c5 is going to have to be played then, which I don't love, but I don't really have a choice. It's not the end of the world, but... Do I take... is a critical moment um e5 is kind of on the cards for him so i'm i don't like it i think i should take so i open my bishop up um rook e1 might be good rook b1 might be good because b7 is still weak he takes me that's kind of surprising uh take with the queen on the bishop Let's take with the bishop Hmm. Bishop c6 is likely. Rook b1, bishop c6. Um, I don't see anything better, to be honest. Can't really push d5 either, because c5 is a problem, which is frustrating. Very frustrating. Bishop c6 is surely the move. I don't think I'm going to take him. Um... No, he always has bishop f6 if I try to set something up, so that doesn't work. 
very annoying. I'm going to go Rook D1, which might be a bit unambitious. I'm going to go Queen E3, just so that I'm not pinned. I still have pressure on B7. If Bishop takes Bishop take if Bishop takes King takes, I want to put the Queen on a square like E4. So if Bishop takes Bishop take King King takes, he probably has to go Queen C6, which he does. But I can go Queen F3, which would get my King very active if he trades, and if he doesn't trade, then B7 is very weak. That's a very good move. That's a really really strong move. Wow, good find, good find. I'm going to go a4. Oh, did I blunder this? Don't know. Okay, but my plan was to go rook b5. a6, rook b6. If he takes, then I take. And he has problems on f7. <laughs> this is really interesting. I don't really understand this move, though. I feel like it's going in the wrong direction. Okay, let's go rook b1, let's pile some pressure on. That was the point of rook b5, b6. Again, strong move. Take, take. Take, 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 take. Wait, I think I can sack that. Because the pawn's going to get through. Maybe he has to take back. I think he might have to take back. And I can play a move like bishop a1. My point is that if he takes my bishop, I'm going to trade queens and then take on a7. Or probably take on a7. Because then if rook c8, rook b8, Rook e8, rook takes c8, rook takes c8, and rook to b8, and I win. Yeah, so he has to do that. I'm going to offer a bishop trade. Don't know if this is optimal. Don't know, don't know. He might be able to just trade everything, but he is rated 2200, so of course I gain elo. Gain free, free elo if I draw. Okay, I need to maintain my nerves. Oh, that's a good move. That's a good move. Let me just try and win this. Bishop takes though, I just kind of missed that. That was stupid. I want to win this pawn. Ah, I missed that. Damn it. Missed that completely. I have pressure. I've got pressure. He could have pressure on f2, but my bishop currently defends it. I might be able to get a draw from this. Yeah, no, I can't let I can't let the pawn go. I need to block it. Let's take. I'm gonna repeat. If I take here, then he's gonna take on F two. Am I missing something? Is this not just the draw? I'm up a pawn. Ah, oh, god, my bishop isn't great. My bishop is not great. Okay, I think I can hold. I think I can hold here. Oh my god. 
check. Go back. This bishop is so annoying. Let's try and trade it. Is this king and pawn endgame okay? I think I might have rushed into this. This must be okay. Yeah. yeah, 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 this is fine. This is fine. Oh my god. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. We get a draw against a guy rated over 2200. I'm very happy with that. I think I de I'm, I'm kind of shaking. Like, I think I'm kind of shaking here. That was intense. And that is literally the reality of what Blitz is like at this level. Like, it's so difficult. And did I play perfectly? No. But, like, it's a step in the right direction. I feel like I I held my own against, uh, you know, a 2200 player. And when he started to push me quite hard in the end game, um, in this kind of position where he's up a pawn, and, uh, you know, it is quite scary. I think in incredibly low time, I handled the position quite well. I don't, I don't think I could play a second game. At least not today, because I am honestly kind of shaking. Like, it's so intense. But we'll get into the game analysis anyway. I would really encourage you to stick around, because of course, unlike a lot of the rapid games that I play, I can't really delve deeper into the uh, ideas during the game, because I'm focusing, I don't have time to explain my thought process. Hopefully this also shows how well I can play when I'm not explaining really in depth all of my moves. Like, I think it's more of an ego thing, to be honest, me trying to prove that I don't suck at chess. <laughs> um, because, of course, I can't play quite as well when I'm explaining my thoughts and taking tons of time in rapid games. But anyway, let's get into the game analysis. I hope you guys enjoy. Okay, wow. So I had 84.9% accuracy that game. My opponent had 82.2. And I got a brilliant move. I don't know where my brilliant move was. But we also both made a ton of bad moves, so this is going to be a fun analysis. Let me just check that you guys can see that properly. Yeah, cool. So, we have an English, and I'm not going to pretend like I know exactly how to play the English position. Apparently, d5 here for black scores incredibly well at master level. But he goes bishop to e7, which I thought was a little bit passive, because I said I was expecting the move d5. I just keep developing. Again, black should probably be playing the move d5. I'm going to take these annotations off, because they kind of annoy me. e3 isn't the best move. e4 is better, I guess, to clamp down on the d5 square. I'm sure a few of you are going to come, in the, come at me in the comments being like, yo, e e4 isn't always the best idea in the English, but in these kinds of positions it is. I assume it's when you get c4, knight c3, g3, and bishop to g2 in before your opponent has a chance to strike with d5, and then you should try and shut them down. Because then you can play like e4 and d4 potentially. I mean, I assume c5 is the best move here, and I am correct. Because if your opponent doesn't and goes for a move like knight c6, then d4... And this just looks like a better, like a far better version of a King's Indian type position. Because the Black Bishop isn't even on g7, where it kind of belongs. And the Knight is also misplaced on c6, in my opinion. But the best line for Black is e5, which you already played e6. That's like another move to be making. And then I can go d5, Knight g to e2 is also good. Worth bearing in mind. So I think as a rule of thumb, if, you're a, if you get... Knight c3, c4, g2, bishop to g... Sorry, g3, bishop g2. And your opponent hasn't played the move d5, then probably go e4 to clamp down on that. Anyway, he goes d6. You go knight g to e2, knight bd7, castle, rook e8. These are all fair moves. d4, I decide now is the time to take the space. And here I was expecting a move like c6 to try and block this and prepare the move d5 in a sort of Slav structure. So let's see something like c6, b3, preparing to develop my bishop, and then something like d5 maybe. 
I thought he might go for something along these lines. But he instead goes c5, which was surprising, because of course I don't have to take. We go b3, and knight b6 is a mistake. And I think I said during the game this felt a bit off, because I wasn't sure how he was going to develop now with the weakness of b7. And this knight isn't really targeting anything that useful. So I was like, the only move you have is d5 if you're going to play knight b6, right? Apparently I can take on c5, which I didn't really consider. But I can just take and play a move like bishop b2 or queen c2 or f4, e4. I guess just claim that my bishop's incredible. Now you can't play d5 ever. And I just have more space. Your knight is also misplaced because what are you even looking at? So something like queen c2, a5 maybe. Then I can play a4, I can play knight b5, I can go e4. Very, very pleasant position. Because this knight, if, if we get a position like this, this knight actually wants to be on c6 so it can get into b4. But on b6 it's very misplaced and you'd have to do a really weird maneuver to get back which would take forever. It just... To me, this position looked kind of King's Indian-like for the black pieces. And I know in the King's Indian, the knight does not go on b6. Because white is too strong on the light squares. Because this, this knight is obviously targeting light squares, right? White is too strong on the light squares for you to try and challenge it like this. And it makes sense as to why I should have taken on c5 to stop him from going d5. But okay, bishop b2. I make a move quickly, and it's not a bad move. My opponent takes... E takes is an inaccuracy, so queen takes is better. Interestingly, I guess because the knight can't come to c6 to attack the queen, the queen is actually difficult to attack. And e5 is obviously a bad move. I mean, it might be okay, but like, look at this hole on d5. If I can lob a knight there or go e4, then d6 is going to be what's known as a backwards pawn because it, it can't advance and it hasn't got any pawns behind it because the e pawn has moved forward. And without the support of the pawn on e6 to push e5, d6 becomes incredibly weak in the future. So we take with the e pawn, okay, maybe not that accurate. e5 is played, and here I should have struck with c5 immediately. My issue with this was is that I thought white, sorry, I thought black could play for the move e5. b4 is a good move. I guess just advancing on the queen side, which is a typical idea, but I thought like my bishop's locked out, maybe e5 is going to be played at some point in the future. Something like b4, knight f8, I guess black is very, very cramped. And then knight f4, this allows the move e4, well e5 can't be played anyway, but we're also putting pressure on the light squares if black tries to do anything. b6 is the best move. Knight b3, bishop to b7. This is kind of like a top computer line ish. Then I have moves like a4 or b5 or f4. I guess this knight just helps to support the dark squares. So, very interesting stuff. I go queen d3 because I wanted to leave the tension. But I guess that wasn't the right idea because I need to play c5. I guess it's actually similar to what I was saying about black playing e5 and leaving a backwards pawn on d6. Because if I go c5 straight away, then the d4 pawn is a backwards pawn, but the file isn't open because his d5 pawn is still on the d5 square. So d4 is actually quite difficult to attack. But when I allow dc4, bc4, then the d pawn, if I push c5, which I did later in, well, I did on this move. Then the d-pawn is a weakness, and it is a backwards pawn, because this file is open, and once I play c5, I can't really go d5 because of how much control he has over that square. So here, knight b5 is apparently on par with the move c5. I thought this wasn't playable. I thought we could just take. Apparently, this is the best line for me. To fork his rooks, and then my knight escapes. Bishop d6. Obviously stopping knight c7, rook fc1, and I guess you can't add another defender there unless you go like rook to e7, but then you just hang the bishop. So I end up up in exchange for a pawn, and this knight obviously escapes, but interesting. I go c5, I misevaluate knight b5, knight bd5, and here the problem is 
I have a backwards pawn, right, on the d4 square, and black is blockading d5 square. What I wanted to maybe do was trade everything here to make sh to force him to have a pawn on d5 so that he couldn't line up rooks against it on the d file. But I didn't want to trade off my light squared bishop. So instead, I decided I'd go knight c3, which is the best move, with the idea that if my opponent played like rook d8 to defend the knight, then I can take, and after takes, I'm better, I think, because now the d-pawn isn't a weakness, and c5 is actually a strength, because he can't put much pressure on my d4-pawn, because I've forcefully closed the file, which is why my opponent took on c3, so he keep, kept the file open. Here I was torn between taking with the bishop or the queen. Taking with the queen was better. I think the simple reason is because the bishop is better on d2 than c3 because it's less vulnerable. And also my queen isn't on the d file to get targeted by rooks, which is what happened. And I had to move the queen anyway. So bishop takes was a bit inaccurate, but it's not terrible. Bishop d7 is a great move. My opponent doesn't really have anything else. Let's say he plays a waiting move, like h6. Then I'm just better. And I, I alluded um, in the game to moves like to moves like uh, queen b5 with lots of pressure on the black position. You can't play something like bishop d7 because a queen b7 is supported by the bishop. So you'd have to, like, say you move the rook to a square like d8. Okay, I actually have just a skewer here. So let's say queen b5, rook f8. And I can play moves like rook fd1, rook fc1, rook ab1, and I just have all the play in this position. Moves like bishop a5 are also possible because b6 hangs a rook. So, bishop d7 was, like, forced, essentially, from my opponent. And fair play for going for it. You can argue it's the most natural move anyway, because you're just developing your final minor piece, so you can connect the rooks and get the rooks into the game. And also challenge my bishop on the long diagonal. So it is the most natural move, but also the best move. And that's the reason it's the most natural move. So rook a b1, bishop to c6. Again, only real move to defend the pawn. If you do something like rook a to b8, apparently that's just bad. Because of bishop d2. Don't ask me why. I have no idea why. Maybe because... I, no, that's defended anyway. I literally have no idea. <laughs> so enlighten me in the comments if you know. But bishop c6, and I didn't want to take him because I fought after queen takes c6. His queen was just very active. And here I have to offer a queen trade. And he has to accept really because if he defends the b8 pawn, sorry, b7 pawn, then I just trade and mess his structure up a bit. And if he moves his queen, then I, of course, take on b7. So he has to trade with me. And b6 is the best move. I mean, like, takes, 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 just trades off into a slightly better position for black because d4 is obviously far weaker than e6. So, okay, rook fd1. I thought my rook's always going to be useful on the d file, so let's do it. And if my opponent takes my bishop, then I'll take back with the king. If he gives me the chance, then I'll play queen to f3. So if he played something like rook a to d8, then my plan was queen to f3, targeting the b7 pawn. And again, the only real move for black is rook d5, just blocking this diagonal, which was a really good move when my opponent did play it in the game. But here I go queen e3, which, I mean, I just wanted to get off the d file because I was worried about things like this. I should have taken on c6 apparently, but I wanted, if the bishops were traded, to be able to play queen f3. I think queen b5 is again the best response because, like I say, I just force a trade of queens essentially unless black wants to mess his structure up a bit. And I'm slightly worse because of my pawn on d4 and black's control over d5, but I'm okay. I'm okay. Queen e3 allowed bishop g2, king g2, queen c6, but I thought I was alright here after queen f3. If my opponent takes, then my king just gets active, and white is actually slightly better. Because the king, the king on e4 is actually really strong, or maybe even e3. Something like, um, let's say, okay, no, you want to defend this pawn, obviously. 
So rook d7, let's say king e3. I don't know, rook c8, and then maybe something like f4. And maybe I'm a bit better here than black because my king is active and it's participating in the defense of my position. And the b file is kind of useful. If something like bishop to f6, I have this pawn protected more than enough. It's probably a draw. But okay. My opponent, my opponent bias finds rook to d5, which was a very, very accurate move. Because it kind of put a bit of a like a hole in my plans. I go a4, which I was really happy I found. My idea was if queen takes a4, then I take on b7, and this is a problem. If something like rook to e8, apparently rook a1, ah, and I'm going to take on a7, and it's completely game over, because rook's on the 7th, queen lining up, it's done. So I was very happy with the move a4, because my point was, after my opponent made his move, apparently b6 was the best here, trying to exploit this. Rook b5 is again the best move, but if cb6, my queen does defend the bishop, up a b6, I guess a4 is just very weak. And black will probably win it. Rook dc1 is the only move, apparently. I guess if queen if, if the queen takes a4, then we take on b6, and if the rook takes on a4, then bishop b4, queen d7, bishop e6, queen to sorry, bishop e7, queen e7, and rook b6. Again, black, can he take? Can he? Rook c8, rook b8. Rook bb8 doesn't work, but uh, rook b7 lining up here. And queen f8. Rook c c7. Ah, so you realign the pieces to go after the f pawn and then you can induce weaknesses you can maybe even go for a position like this with the white pieces which is probably just a simple draw but my opponent went h5 of course i could have played h4 but i thought rook to b5 was kind of inviting black in with the move h4 which i thought would be a waste of time and i'm correct rook db1 and i have some nice pressure on the b pawn and then maybe black has to play a move like rook b8 which is quite passive so, my opponent goes rook c8, which was a very good move, because after rook db1, he could have gone rook c7, which I think was probably a bit more pragmatic, but he instead goes b6, and he wants to put pressure on my bishop. I could have gone bishop b4 to defend c5, but I wanted to add some complication, especially because of the time difference, and I find the brilliant move cb6, which I was very happy about. And you can't accept the sacrifice. If queen c3, it's game over. Queen c3, rook c3, and I was going to take on a7. I can do this first, and then I'm actually, again, yeah, just completely winning. But my idea was queen here, queen here, rook here, and b a7. And it's better than b7, because then you can't play bishop d6 to sack the bishop. And also it allows my rooks in here. So... Black's only real idea is rook to d8, and then after rook to b8, um, obviously you can't take because I'll take with promotion. So rook c c8, and I can either do this, and after rook b8, you you know you can't do anything. If you want to if you want to take, then I'll just promote, and if you want to save the rook, then I'll just take and promote. Uh, but also I could just um, after this 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 this. Uh, here, 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 I can just promote already, because if everything gets traded, I just end up with a queen against a bishop. So that was my idea, and I was very happy I found that in low time. But my opponent didn't fall for it. He didn't fall for it. He took on b6 instead. Very good move here. I should have taken on d5. Yeah, I, I probably should find this, to be honest. And if something like queen d5, queen d5, ed5 maybe bishop b4 is there an issue with this ah bishop f6 so bishop to a square like e1 is better than if bishop to f6 i win b6 and i have the outside passer which is quite strong i guess my bishop supports the a5 square and defends f2 if my opponent goes 
the knight bishop to d4 and rook to c2 to target the pawn, which is kind of what happened in the game. Anyway, I choose bishop b4, and my idea was if my opponent takes, then I'm good. Probably everything gets traded. Maybe we have a rook versus rook endgame. It's probably just a draw. But he goes bishop f6, and then I was like, oh, I missed that. I completely missed that. And I go bishop to e1, which is a mistake. I should have just taken. And if queen takes, queen takes, pawn takes. I guess I just have a very similar position. Except I'm a move behind because I've done this shuffle. So if bishop d4, then he's defending this in time. And I can maybe still try and hold on to this. Something like rook b5, bishop c5, blocking this, a5. Takes, bishop takes, and I mean, I, I probably hold this. I would like to think. I go bishop e1, and my opponent makes a mistake with bishop d4. He should have taken with the rook. Really? Queen c6, rook c6, rook b6, rook b6, rook b6, and rook a4. And the difference is... Unlike the previous position where black is up a pawn, here it's an e6 pawn rather than a d5 pawn, which means that the pawn is far like better protected and it's difficult for me to hunt down, whereas a pawn on d5 is isolated and I can kind of hunt it and stop it from promoting a bit easier. Maybe it's still a draw, but with bishops on the board, there are chances for the black pieces. Instead, he takes on d4. And I decided to just trade everything on d5 because I didn't know what else to do. This is the best decision. We trade and I go rook d1. This is a mistake. I honestly just missed rook to c4. Rook b5 is better. And after bishop to c5, again, we have this similar idea where I trade um, the flank pawns off and I just try and target the d5 pawn. And it's kind of difficult for black to defend it because he's in a bit of a situation here. And if I trade the bishops, it's probably just a dead draw. If something like g6, let's say, I can also just bring the king. Because black can't move the bishop because he loses the pawn. He can't move the rook because he loses the bishop. And if he pushes the pawn like this, then I guess the pawn just becomes difficult to defend after my king gets into the game. And also, the h-pawn could hang in some scenarios. Rook d1, though, is a mistake because of rook c4. I missed this. And I'm like, look. I, I have to push this pawn, and black has to take. He has to take, and he's better after just anything, really. But I guess this is a better position than when my rook is on b5, because my rook's far more passive on d1 than it is on b5. But he goes b5, and now I'm winning? After If, if I go rook b1... Going after b5. Okay, if rook to c5, then king f3, and black is frozen, and this pawn is a danger. Very interesting. I guess I just kind of put his rook in a bit of a more awkward position. I instead go a6, because my idea was to deflect his bishop. b4. Oh my god, I missed a win. I can take on d4. And if rook takes d4, then a7, and he can't stop promotion. Ah, no way. Yeah, I just missed a clear win. <laughs> oh, that sucks. That sucks. But, okay, he missed clear. He, he, he missed winning positions as well. I instead go a7. Bishop a7, rook takes d5. And my opponent makes a mistake with bishop c5. He should have gone b3. I thought that I could go rook to b5 here and get behind the pawn, and black has to find the move rook to c1. And if I move the bishop, he has to go rook to c2, except this isn't actually winning. So I probably can hold this. King h1 is apparently better than king h3. Don't ask me why, I don't know. Maybe because I'm going to get targeted with moves, oh yeah, like g5, g4, that's the issue. Very interesting, though. He goes bishop c5, trying to stop my rook from accessing b5. I go rook d3. Again, an inaccuracy. Rook c2 is a miss, though. Rook b3 is a miss. I should have checked and then gone from behind, I think. Crazy. But my opponent goes h4. 
which is not the right idea. I should take on b4. I instead take on h4, which is again not the right idea. King h7 is a miss. Rook to c4 is better, just guarding the pawn. And now I go king g3. Again, a miss. Taking on b4 is better. I was scared about this, but apparently I shouldn't have been. Because I guess with rooks on the board, this is a draw. If my opponent... Oh, we can't take here because I'll take the rook. So something like rook f5 and then takes, takes. And then even though my pawn structure is bad, I can apparently hold on here kind of easily. If I just keep lateral like attacks going and making it difficult for black to progress. <sighs> okay, <laughs> it was so interesting. Just mistakes everywhere. But king g6 is a blunder because now I get to take on b4. My opponent keeps the bishop on the board, which I think was a good idea. And here I was so close to flagging several times. But I find good moves and I just accept that this pawn is going to fall. I don't see the point in playing a move like rook h3 or king h3 because this pawn isn't really useful. Uh, apparently I can hold on to it, but I don't know. I thought it was a lost cause and I should just give it up, which. It's fine. I kind of just keep um, moving. I did hang h2 here, though. Bishop h2. I need to go rook a3 or rook b3. I think it's probably still drawing, but it's probably a bit harder. He takes on h4, though, and then I play the move h3, which I was very happy with, by the way, because h3 means that he can't put the rook on g4, which means I can put the king on g2 to keep an eye on both of my remaining pawns. This is a bit more difficult for white than it is for black. Black is definitely pushing. One, because his king is more active. Two, because my pawns are split. His pawns protect each other perfectly, and I can't even target g7 with rook g3 because he protects that square. And if he gets g5 in, then the pawn protects the bishop and the pawn, and the bishop protects the pawn on f6. So he gets that classic structure. But h3 means that after rook d4, bishop e3, rook d1, king g2, I have a perfect setup in my mind. I was like, this is an easy, easy draw. Whether it was or not, I don't know. Rook b1, rook f5, king g6, rook f3, rook b3, bishop f4. I offered to trade everything. My opponent kind of has to accept. We go for it. And here I just trusted that this was drawing, which it is. I go f4, and I think this is the cleanest way to draw this position. Because if black takes and takes, then he either goes after my pawn and I get his pawn, or he tries to defend his pawn, and then I just try and deflect his king. And I mean, he doesn't really have anything better. If he goes to like h6, then I just advance. And if he goes after my pawn, I take his pawn. If he defends his pawn, I can just use my pawn as a decoy to force his king away so I can take. So it's a dead draw, but yeah, this makes it kind of easy. And h4, I force his king to the h file, go to f4, and we trade pawns. And it's a draw. So I did have chances to win, so did my opponent. That's Blitz at the end of the day. And I hope the, I know the analysis was quite long. This was actually really long. But I hope it was quite useful nonetheless. Um, I wonder whether you guys want more Blitz content like this. A bit more raw, a bit more real as to how I actually behave when I play. I do get very nervous, especially against people this high rated. Um, and I can't talk quite as much, of course, but I hope it was very interesting and I'll see you in the next video. Hopefully I can get 2100 blitz at some point.